oh yeah the the way the whole process starts off is with a um, with a ball a beach ball so yeah the, the reason why the rope is blue is because it's, it's the default color is that I like to use materials that are, um, are commonplace that are, that are you know not specialist but something that are easy um, instantly recognizable so yeah it, it just kind of evolved from there um, I spent a long time weaving and trying to do clever things uh, with the rope and then just sort of came to the realisation that that's much more interesting to make a big ball of it. It, it really started out, it really started out with rope actually um, and I was interested, I just had a length of rope and I was just interested in the way that um, you know, we're all used to sort of cutting a bit of rope and melting the end of it and it sort of goes hard. Um, then if you get a, a piece of metal um, shaped or a flat piece and you heat that and press it against the rope, you melt and reform the rope into um, something that completely transforms its, um, its appearance and its texture and its um, and a, and a structure. seat needed to be a recognisable form because the whole project is really about um, the process and the material and I thought to have a seat that's specifically designed and you know that could be a new form would detract so I went for the sort of generic um, well the seat is sort of based on a generic sort of Eames um, DX chair um, and because it's a familiar form and it's comfortable, it's proven. set up a certain series of, of, of events or of a production line or you have a material and you just let it all happen and you, you control you, can, you have control of certain parameters um, but then the outcome is completely unpredictable and I think it's also about um, about narrative I think I think what interests me what what I really like in in any work actually is um, is if something can, if you can relate to something on several different levels. What I try to achieve is that you know if somebody comes into a room and they see one of my pieces, um, that there will be an, uh, an initial sort of attraction or, or an initial point of interest, and then if I'm there and I can explain it, or if they can look at it and see that there's another side, another depth to it, like that there's a, a story behind the whole production process, then um, then for me that sort of that's the sort of big big distinction from um, an object that just exists as what it is and something that, that sort of reveals a story or sort of narrative. It's got, a, it's got more sort of, um, or it's more profound, I think. It's interesting, I mean, some people 
more and more people are referring to me as an artist and I'm quite sort of comfortable with that but I'm equally as comfortable when somebody calls me a designer. I, a lot of the time it depends on context um, and I, I'm just quite happy sort of sitting in that grey area and I think it's much more interesting if you can't quite define what somebody does or who somebody is. Um, so yeah, I, I generally don't worry about it so much anymore. Thank you.